If you look closely at this video, you will see the all new Subaru Forester with eyesight. It's right over here, right at the center. This is the all new 5th generation Subaru Forester IS with eyesight. It may look similar to the 2018 model, but it's an entirely new vehicle. The IS is the top of the line variant of the Forester and sells for about 1.79 million. The features of the IS are very similar to the IL, which is the next cheaper model. Uh, the main difference is that the IS has a sunroof and it has 18 inch wheels while the IL only has 17s. The Forester is very similar to the RAV4 in terms of size and pricing, but not in terms of features. If you compare it to the local version of the RAV4, the Forester is a lot lot better equipped in terms of safety and convenience features. The main selling point of the vehicle is its eyesight technology, which I'll talk about later in the video. For now, let me give you a walk around. The exterior design of the Forester is pretty conservative, especially if you compare it to the very sharply designed RAV4. If you're not familiar with the Subaru, you'd probably think that it's the same as last year's model. The first time that I saw it, I actually thought that it was a facelift, but all the panels are different and it's based on a new platform. The front end of the new Forester looks a bit broader and brawnier. The grille is a bit more squared off. On the sides of the vehicle, there are plenty of creases and swooping lines, and it has adequately bulging fenders, which give it a masculine but still domesticated look. At the back, it has new C-shaped tail lamps. The IS model gets 18-inch wheels wrapped into 25 55 series tires. Overall, it's a conservative design, but it has enough aggression to it that it doesn't look boring. The interior of the new Forester has a premium feel to it. Most of the surfaces are covered in soft touch materials. The seats are covered in leather for both the IL and the IS. The vehicle has three display screens. There's a screen at the top, which displays information such as weather, a compass, your eyesight settings, climate control settings, etc. And then there's the 8-inch infotainment screen. It's touchscreen, it has Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, it has navigation. I also like the fact that it can be controlled by physical knobs and buttons. I still think that there's no better way to adjust volume than using an old-fashioned knob. And then there's the display screen at the instrument cluster, which displays information such as your MPG. The vehicle has dual zone climate control. It has 8-way power adjustable seats with memory. Also, the vehicle can recognize your face and adjust the seats and also the mirrors and the climate control according to your preferred settings. At the back, it has two air vents and two USB ports. This IS trim has a sunroof. Space is very plentiful in the new Forester. It feels more spacious than the previous model. It's called eyesight because it's like having an extra pair of eyes on the road and on you. It monitors the driver and if it detects that you're getting drowsy or distracted, it will alert you. It has adaptive cruise control which will automatically speed up or slow down the vehicle depending on the speed of traffic. And it's not just for the highway, it will also work on stop and go traffic. It will allow the vehicle 
to come to a complete stop and then resume again when the traffic moves. You can set your maximum speed and maximum distance to the car in front of you. It has cross traffic alert for the front as well as for the rear. It has blind spot warning. It has lane keep assist. I'm usually skeptical of modern electronic features on vehicles, but I got to try this on the road, and it's no gimmick. If I had kids, I would want them to be in a vehicle with a system like this. The Forester, like all Subarus, is powered by a Boxer engine. The Boxer engine is a type of engine where the cylinders are horizontal. One advantage of this configuration is that it has lower center of gravity. This is not a very common engine type though, so if you bring this outside the casa, you might confuse your average mechanic. It's a 2 liter naturally aspirated engine, which produces 156 horsepower and 196 newton meters of torque. It is adequate for the size of the vehicle and for its purpose, which is to drive your family around. All variants of the Forester will be all-wheel drive. Not just that, it will also have active torque vectoring, which can direct torque to any of the four wheels if it detects slippage. That'll help with traction and slippery surfaces. Mechanically, the Forester is pretty advanced compared to the competition. Ride quality is pretty good. Sound insulation is very good. Noise and vibration levels are kept to a minimum. Acceleration is adequate. Although because it's a CVT, there's that drone that you get during heavy acceleration. But this is no sports car and your DAC shouldn't be going over 4000 RPM anyway. I got to test the eyesight on the road and it really does work. Like I showed you earlier, the vehicle automatically slowed down when it detected a pedestrian crossing the road. I also got to test the adaptive cruise control and traffic. It worked as advertised. Given the features of the vehicle, I would expect it to be a lot more expensive. But it's cheaper than the RAV4 and it's about the same price as the gasoline powered CRV. Both of which are way under equipped compared to the Forester. The IS sells for 1.79 million, but if you don't need the sunroof, I think the IL at 1.69 million is right at the sweet spot. For a gasoline-powered SUV like this, fuel efficiency is a very important consideration. The Forester does about 13 kpl mixed, according to official estimates, but in Manila traffic, it will most likely do a lot less, with some reviewers saying that it does 6.25 kpl in traffic. The value that you get for your money on the Forester is very impressive. The main drawback for local buyers is that there is no diesel option, but if that's something that you can ignore, if safety as a major consideration for you, and you had 1.6 million pesos to spend on a compact crossover, you'd be hard pressed to find a better deal. 